What's up guys, welcome back to IT Security Labs. Today we're going to be doing an attack and detect lab. We have here Security Onion in my environment, which is listening for traffic that's going to hack the box. So we'll be completing a machine called Arctic. During that process, we're going to be doing a lot of detections. As you can see here, we can detect when someone gets a reverse shell. It's outlined by this one here. We can detect when Nmap is ran. I'll show you how all these work. And if you move any Windows files in plain text, like executable files, you'll also be able to be caught by this one. Uh, before we get started, let me show you this one here, which shows that there was a shell connection. This is when we got a reverse shell earlier. And this is what we need to be doing on Hack the Box as we learn more about how to attack. We need to be able to detect what we're doing. In this case, as you can see, I used uh, setutil to download a file. So how do we do that? And is this something that we can add to your lab environment so that you can start attacking machines? Well, the first thing is we need to be a member of Hack the Box. In this case, I'm attacking retired machines. Retired machines are easier because as you can see, I'm the only one on this machine. And that means that I'm pretty much capable of attacking these without worrying about other people resetting my machine or even uh, getting in my VPN. So 10, 10, 11. Let's go and see if we can get there. Ping 10.10.10.11. 10 .10 As you can see, I'm getting a ping. If I do a trace route there or trace set in Windows, I'll show you how this looks like. Okay, so notice I just stopped it in the two hops. First, I went to OpenSense, as you can see here. So OpenSense is the client of Hack the Box. Then we reached the Hack the Box router here. So let me show you what that looks like. So instead of having a VPN client run on the Kali machine here, straight to Hack the Box, I have the VPN client run on OpenSense. That way I can watch the traffic before it's encrypted and send it to my security on your intrusion detection system. That's all there is to it is let's just put a middleman here. That way we can watch. But of course, I need to do some port forwarding here. Say all ports that come to the VPN tunnel to hack the box needs to go to Kali or I can port forward to a Windows machine if I want to make sure that I can work with Windows as well. But that's pretty much the setup here. Now that we can ping, let's go and run a simple Nmap scan. So what I like to do is let's just do an um, nmap minus sv minus c on that IP minus pn, no ping. And I like it to be verbose. That way I can see in real time what's, what ports are open on that system. So as you can see here, we see port 8500, which is called Fusion. The service called Fusion runs on here. And we see another port here, 4591. And then 135. This, so this looks like a Windows machine. On your, and let's look at right now as we are running Nmap, are we able to see the traffic? And we should be able to see Nmap because we are running it in its default format. So if I go to my alerts, I'm going to change it to the last maybe 15 minutes instead of 15 hours. So in the last 15 minutes, as you can see, this is all Nmap right now except for this one. But if you run Nmap, you will uh, actually get caught. In this case, this is all scan. If you drill down into any of these, you'll be able to see that this is actually Nmap just browsing through common ports. And of course, this one is not a real SQL attack. It's just a scan. So it's a suspicious inbound to SQL. Of course, that's from Nmap. So Nmap will keep generating more alerts as we get, get there. And we will see them all at once at the end. So now let's go back to here. So we see port 8500. If we just open up the browser, if we go here, it will take us to a code fusion site. Okay, so here's the use CFC docs, user files. Let's go to the first one. So now of all these folders here, uh, this one administrator looks interesting. Okay, so we entered the word password and we want to see if it works. Okay, so it's invalid password, but we see that we have called Fusion 8 administrator. Um, so we can look up for exploits for this one. So exploit code Fusion 8. As you can see, code Fusion 8 is everywhere. So we have too many here. 
But we see uh, here's a Metasploit directory traversal. Uh, here's a Python script. Let's let's see if we can find something online as well. All right. So here it says uh, we have a directory traversal. It's probably the same script that we saw earlier, but I'm just going to do it manually by hand. So we'll go to this location here. We are supposed to see a password if everything or a password hash. If we go to this URL, that's a vulnerability for code fusion eight. So let's go. Okay, so as you can see, um, it exposes the password and it says encrypted true, so it's encrypted. So we copy this. Let's go to hash identifier. We should be able to find a, an online hash identifier. I like the one from Tunnels Up. Paste that hash. Analyze. So it's SHA1. Now we need to look for a SHA1 decryptor. So if we just do a quick quick Google search, SHA1 decryptor, and here is one, best SHA1 decryptor. Come back here. Let's give them the hash. Decrypt. So we have password of happy day. Okay. So we can come here and say admin, then give them the password of happy day and log in. Okay. So as you can see, I also looked up uh, as I was looking for the code fusion vulnerabilities. I've also found this one. Uh, this is a file upload. It's a Python script that we can make work, but going in the spirit of doing it by hand, if we read this script here, it tells us that um, we're doing an upload to a path. In this case, we're going to the default code fusion app application upload. Uh, they are using this path here, scripts. So they are setting up a script then that, that will actually upload. But let's go to our code fusion. If you go to debugging and logging, uh, I can create a scheduled task. And I've found out that if we create a new scheduled task here, in this case, I created one called the rev shell. So once you create your scheduled task, you name it whatever you want. The time doesn't really matter. What you need to do is give it your IP address with a file, a JSP file that you would have generated. So you need to generate a reverse shell using JS, JSP. And in order for you to do that, you can just go to rev online.com. It's a JSP file. So you can say, here's my Kali uh, port. I'm going to use 4444, no, no, 4445. Um, yeah, sure, I'll use Netcat. Uh, in this case, the OS is going to be Windows. We can copy this or we can use uh, MS of Venom. Uh, the extension is not that. It needs to be JSP Stageless. There we go. So if you go to RevShells.com, we can generate for that. And all we need to do is run this command shell.jsp can paste so let's name it shell1 and hit enter so now once that is done we need to go back to our code fusion and say hey uh, get a file called shell1.jsp from this location here. I mean, uh, from my Kali Linux. So this is my Tano IP, port 9090. You need to make sure that you come here then, once it's done, and do Python 3 minus m http dot server on 9090. Okay. Now I need to tell it, okay, I want you to go to the root directory of the code fusion that, um, server. So C code fusion eight, that's the default installation. WW root. I like to name this one show one.jsp. Make sure you put it all correct. Check the publish uh, save output file and submit. And once this happens, we need to run our schedule task. Okay, so once that happens, click on the Run schedule task. You can find an article online that will walk you through the same exact process here with screenshots.
I just don't remember where it is, but I found it when I was going through my OSCP. This is a similar machine in one of the labs, uh, practice labs. So run schedule task, and if this task runs correctly, you notice that you see the get uh, with the 200 status code. Okay, now we need to, now that we, we got our reverse show there, net, net cat minus L, V, and P, triple four, five, we need to now uh, listen and execute our reverse shell. In order for us to execute it, we need to find it right at the root of the install. So it'll be right here. While this is loading, let's check our alerts here. In the last eight minutes, we just uploaded a reverse shell. Um, let's see if we, we will be able to see it. Okay, we saw um, simple HTTP server banner. So my path was simple HTTP server. The banner was caught. Bad idea to use that. Here's another one. Um, JS, Java JSP and the password properties as well. The one that we found earlier. So our detection is doing very great here, sketching the major moments. So let's see. This one is the web shell one. Is it able to see the actual file? Yes. This is the, it gives you the contents of the file that we uploaded. You, you can tell here, this is where the socket is being set. So this is awesome detection. We can see, uh, obviously we are using an HTTP server, it's not HTTPS, and we're just practicing. Okay, so shell1.jsp is right here. If I click on this, it should reach out back to me here. And by the way, this should also be caught by our intrusion detection system. Because that's very, very uh, suspicious behavior. That's a reverse shell. So in a, in a little bit here, I should see that, hey, we saw a connection. All right, there we go. I just refreshed it. As you can see, uh, attack response Windows 7 CMD shell from local system. Then let's see this one. Usually they will print out like the terminal that popped up. Let's see. All right, here it is. This is the terminal called Fusion 8, runtime bin. This is where we landed. So that was the network data dot decoding. If you look here, you can also read the specific messages that are there and what they're looking for. They're looking for Microsoft Windows. They're looking for the Windows banner, pretty much. This at the top here. Right away, we know that this is version 6.1. If you copy that and you look it up, and you can run uh, exploit suggester if you want, but I'm seeing MS 11 is 05. And one of the tools, one of the, one of the uh, scripts that they suggest is using this one, Chimichuri, which is a very popular one. So I'm feeling lazy today. I'm going to run the um, compiled version. So we need to download this, get it to our Kali Linux machine. So just download it from GitHub. And once we get it to our Kali Linux machine, we need to get it to our, the victim machine. So once you hit download, it should be in your downloads. So it's this chimichurri. I tried the chorizo, it didn't work. Okay, so to download it uh, out there, you can do a Python 3. Minus M, HTTP dot server on 80. No, uh, on 8000. We are in the same folder where we downloaded that chimichurri. Now we just need to go here and run set util. Set util should download that file to our victim machine. Okay, so the command to download is this one. I just put it together for you. Let me move myself out of the way. So here's what we're doing. Here. Say, hey, set util. Let's download from Mike Harley on nine, port 9000, file called chimichuri.exe. Uh, put it uh, as chimichuri.exe on the desktop. Let's see if this works. Make sure that my port 9000 is listening. Actually, it's put 8,000, so let's fix that to 9,000. All right, now that that's happening, let's move the file. Let's see. Sometimes we might not be able to write to these places, but in this case, I see my chimichurri.exe is here. So the syntax is you do that, then you give them the name of the file, give them the remote IP address that we want to run. I think that's what they documentation says here and then we give them the port so we want them to go to 10.10.16.16 .10 .16 on port uh, 4343 it's a random port 
okay, so it, it, it runs, and I need to start my listener. Naked minus LV and P for three for three. Okay. Now we go back here. Let's run this command one more time. Looks like the binary works. I hope I didn't burn it. And by the way, moving files like this definitely gets us caught. Getting reverse shells like this will definitely get us caught. So here's another one. That's another reverse shell. Where am I? You see, we're NT system. So we have escalated our privileges. Let's go find the user, uh, the administrator flag. Okay. Type root.txt. And we got it. So now the next order of business is let's go check out our security onion. I know that we just got, we just did two things here. We moved a chimichurri binary and we also got a reverse shell. So we should see those two uh, show up right away since we are not encrypting any of our traffic. So the biggest takeaway here is encrypt your traffic if you want things to work for you. So that moving is probably right here. The getting response is probably going to be part of this. But let me refresh. Uh, let me put last three minutes. This will ensure that I'm only catching the ones that we just happened. Okay. So this is uh, downloaded. Let's verify that this is Chimichurri being downloaded downloaded on the network. So let's go here. Oh, here's, here's the contents of the binary, of course. Okay, this is when we ran the binary, simple HTTP server. And here's the contents. So it's a policy violation because we're moving executable files. Let's look at this medium one. What did this see? All right, here's the binary again with the 200 OK. Okay, so this is just the same thing. We saw a binary being moved. And then, of course, we got a reverse show back. This is very interesting. I hope you like the detecting part of Hack the Box. If you do, please remember to like and subscribe. And I'm working on a video. It's kind of hard to work in Hyper-V right now or VirtualBox. But I might end up just settling for the one in VMware. ESXi as I always do. Otherwise, thanks for being here and I hope to see you next time.